Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, January 28, 2014 uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. The uh, first item on the agenda is uh, to approve the minutes of our December 11th, 2013 meeting. Can I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes? I'll move, move. to. Second. Approve the minutes. Okay. Any discussion, edits, modifications? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? No, that's unanimous or four, what is it, four, three, zero, four, zero? Four. Do we have four? Yeah, Barry's there. over there, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, no old business. Uh, new business. I'd like to. Uh, Introduce to the uh, town our two newest Zoning Board of Appeals members, uh, Mike, Michael Valancourt and uh, Michael Tatama Woodland. I can't. Weedland. Weedland. There you go. Thank. Uh, welcome. Look forward to having you uh, join us in our merry little trip through uh, the ordinance. Um, Thank Thanks. Next uh, is my. Uh, uh, great pleasure to announce that uh, um, Josh Carver has agreed to uh, serve as a new chair of the ZBA, and uh, I can take a seat at the far end of whichever table I will choose to have me. Um, I would like to, um, I don't know if we did anything as far as uh, having a, who, who's our current secretary? It was either uh, Chris or Jeff. Okay, but we had one. We did. <laughs> Good. <Okay. laughs> so we need a new one. Yeah. Okay. We need motions for both. Of I know. Okay. Um, uh, so let's let's deal with the, the chairmanship since we at least, I at least you know grease that skid somewhat. So um, I have a motion to uh, uh, nominate uh, Josh Carver's a new chairman. So moved. Join. I can have a second. Barry, uh, all in favor? Any opposed? No opposition. Do, do I vote? No, you're no. 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 Okay. Uh, great. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, do you want to take over arm twisting for the secretary, Mr. Chairman? Sh sure. <laughs> do we switch seats now? Uh, we can. <laughs> Last bit of new business before moving on to um, the one pending matter in front of the board is um, the election of a secretary. Do I have any volunteers? I'll volunteer. Oh. <laughs> Since I won in the um, debate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. Um, so do we have a motion? I'll, motion, I'll make a motion to. Uh, approve Joanne as our secretary. I'll second. Um, any discussion? Nice work. All right. All in favor? All right. So that is Eric, five, five, nothing um, in favor of Joanne as the secretary. Okay. Um, so moving on to the one matter pending before the board um, is uh, D3 on the agenda. It's to hear the request of Paula McNulty of 50 Market Street, Suite A, number 252, South Portland, Maine, for an approval to reconstruct, expand a non-conforming structure at 2 Beacon Lane, map U14, lot 45, per section 19, dash four dash three B three of the zoning ordinance. Um, and before we uh, have uh, or 
before we open this up for uh, Ms. McNulty. Uh, can we have a quick summary of how this got here first? No? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Paula McNulty contacted me several months ago and made me aware of plans she had for her house. Uh, the house has been uninhabited and dilapidated for the past couple of years due to water damage. And uh, Paula would like to renovate and expand the house based on the plans that, that you see in your packets. And you can see that a, a small section of the front of the garage encroaches into the front setback. And you can see that a corner of the house encroaches into the side setback. Uh, no part of the proposed structure encroaches further into these setbacks, so a variance isn't necessary. But there will be additional floor area in the setbacks, which requires uh, an approval under 19.4B3. Was it additional floor area enclosed? Was that floor area in addition to deck space that was already there, or was it basically just enclosure of existing? Like if you counted the deck space as floor area, it was the same? Uh, de deck space and floor area are different in, in the zoning ordinance. Right. And uh, so, let's see. But if, it, if you, I know that they're different under the ordinance, but what I was trying to figure out was if you counted the, floor, the deck area that was in, on the historic structure with the new floor area that's non-conforming be roughly equivalent? Yeah, I, I think it would be roughly equivalent, may even be less actual area of encroachment because if you, there, she's reducing the area of encroachment on the garage side of the structure. And, uh, and, and, she's, and she's pulling back on the deck side of the structure as well. So I, I didn't crunch that number. But the, the floor area is increasing, but I, it, it looks like the actual footprint of encroachment is probably decreasing. OK. OK. Um, I guess we'd like to now open it up uh, for uh, Ms. McNulty and um, anybody speaking on her behalf uh, to give us some further background regarding this. Yeah, if you want to uh, step up to the podium. More Absolutely. And is there anything that you'd like to, before we um, open it up to questions, is there anything that you'd like to add to, to what Ben said? Anything else about the history of, of the house, you're living in the house? Right. I mean, essentially, Ben has the, the picture correctly. Um, we've had the house uh, since 1998, and um, when our middle son graduated high school, um, we, we've been commuting back and forth between New York and Maine. We decided we'd give it a try and, and see if we can live in Maine, I mean in New York. And um, we had been coming back on the weekends. And then when we had a really cold spell a few years back, three years exactly actually, um, one of the pipes that was, in, they put them on the outside of the house, it froze, it burst, and then it ran for a couple of days. Then the mitigation company came in and did a subpar job. And we didn't know that until we went in and we were ready to build. And mold had completely overtaken the entire house. So we just have now gotten everything to where it's mitigated and we're ready to, you know, start returning to our home that, you know, we haven't been able to use. Thank you. Um, Yeah, what, uh, what is the total square footage of the, uh, the, the, uh, the remodel? What, what's the, is it 45? Yes, it's about 4,500 square feet. 
Okay. And do you know approximately what the floor space was of the, the current house? Pretty much similar. About um, the same. We, we're, we had five. Uh, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have sorry, an opportunity I, for the public to comment. Um, so if you could just hold any, uh, any extraneous comments until um, uh, after the McNulty's have Thank you. If it's different, I'm not aware of the disturbance. We have five bed bedrooms and three bathrooms to start, and that's pretty much what we're proposing. And one thing I was curious about is just on the drawings uh, and looking at the, I think I, I think on the south elevation, it looked like the height was about, uh, if I'm recalling, about 32 uh, feet uh, was the height, I think, from the south elevation from um, the grade to the, uh, uh, to the top. And I'm just curious where, where that chimney is sitting in relation to how much, I didn't have my ruler with me, but how much higher is the chimney um, than the than the, uh, um, the roof? Approximately three feet higher. It has to be um, three feet away and then three feet higher from the peak. So, so it would be so 35. So is the peak of that chimney at 35 feet? Yes. Was there a building permit applied for within one year? Is that, I feel like we've talked about this before, but I've forgotten that. I, the, the structure is still standing okay. on, on the property. Okay. But this is a complete rebuild? I mean, it's, a, it's, it's a renovation. being demoed down to the foundation? No, the house is going to remain. Okay. Uh, we're just going to um, bring the roof line all even. And so we're going to raise the roof so that it's all, it's not going to be much higher than it is right now. It's pretty much the same. Um, and it's just all going to be one height. Uh, the original structure has been built on to many, many, many times. And so as a result, we have, um, I think, maybe about seven different roof levels. Yes. And it's allowed for all kinds of damage to occur in the eaves. And we just want to eliminate that. So, it can so this is not a tear down? No. The garage is coming down. Yeah. The garage, as you can see by the photos, are, it's no good. Okay. And the pad in the garage needs to be torn up too. I also wanted to mention that I, I do have a certified survey here. It, it was not included in the packet, but if anyone wants to see a stamp survey, I have it. Good. Does that have information, or perhaps Ms. McNulty, do you have information on how close the existing deck is to the property line today? Uh, which property, which uh, side? I'm sorry, the deck on the, uh, I, I think it's the west. The deck, it, it appears to be, I don't know, less than 10 feet from the property line. Um, Can you tell? I think the, the upper deck on the far left. Right, that's what we're trying to. I think it's a, it's a little bit more than 10 feet. A little bit more than 10 mm -hmm. feet. And the proposed condition that will be reduced. Um, if you can see the page two. This, um, this area here is all gone, which is the, currently the <laughs> stair to the deck is beyond the setback, but we are reducing that west. So we are reducing the setback. So, so you'll go from a condition today where you're somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 feet from the property line to right, maybe 14, more, 14 more or so than, feet from the yes. property line. I can read a map, but just looking at the application, just when I'm looking at the side setbacks, they're all saying 25 plus. So I mean, I can see what this is. I guess I was a little thrown off initially by by just the application because the sides are all 25, 25 or 25 plus, fronts are 30. 
so for, for proposed? No, both current and proposed. Current and proposed. Besides, I mean, you, you read the application, it's like okay. there's no change in the footprint. So. Okay. Yeah, that's that's an error on the application. Uh, the Based on my tape measure, the existing deck is approximately six feet from the line, and uh, the proposed structure will be about nine. So we're going, going from six feet from the line to nine feet from the line, roughly. And you said there were five bedrooms? Yes. And the septic set is adequate for five bedrooms? No, we no. actually um, are, re I believe in your packet, there's also a yeah. septic. We're going to. Um, I saw that. It said four to five bedrooms. That's why I was. Right. I mean, we, the septic that's there is, is the same one that was original to the house. Mm -hmm. And it, it never really served us very well with three bathrooms. So um, we're just taking this opportunity to just put in a, a, a better one that would serve that without any problems. But you're not changing the number of bathrooms? No. So you're putting in a bigger septic to serve the yes. same number of bathrooms? Are you removing trees or? Um, we are going to need to remove um, a couple of trees on our property, yes. There's, a pro I think, three um, to accommodate the septic as well as everything else. Yeah. So they're kind of over by the, your pool area? The septic will no, sit yeah. down from. Right. Uh, the trees you're going to remove were approximately, are they? Yes. That's, they, I think he notes uh, the elm, something about an elm, um, and that is on the lower half um, by balsam, I think. Pine, two, maybe three pines. That's just listed on the application. The type and amount of vegetation to be removed. Is the septic, uh, is the new septic going in the same location as the no. existing? No, it's going in a different location. Um, one down, downhill a little bit more. Are you replanting for the trees that are removed? Yeah, once everything gets done, we plan on landscaping it again. Yep. Especially the apple tree and apple tree. Our ordinance, the, I'm sure you're meeting this standard, but that specifies that trees removed for relocation must be replanted with at least one per, uh, that's at least three feet in height. Right. Where's the current uh, septic? It's uh, closer to the house. It's, um, let's see, if you look at. I'm looking at, I'm looking at this one. At that one? Yeah. You can see the tank. It's right, see those two little dots behind the five, six? Got them. Around 12. And are you moving more down? I'm just trying to read, read it off your, your septic application, but are you moving more down? below the, the pool, if you will? Yes, it'll be right around, right around here. Oh, sorry, hold on. <laughs> yeah. So this is the street, it, it's going down, and uh, <coughs> this is the street, so we'll be right about here. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Do you, do you have any information on, um, and this may have been asked, on uh, the footprint area? And where I'm going with this is the, the building coverage on the lot, the percentage of, of the lot that the building will cover? I don't. Percentage of the lot that the building is. We have the square footage of the lot. Mm. Yeah, I guess, I guess the, reason, the reason I ask is, um, there is a there's a maximum building coverage um, requirement 
independence. And without that information, it's a little unclear whether or not it meets it. I'd recommend that the, if the zoning board chooses to approve this, there's a condition that the maximum building, building coverage on the property is limited to 20% as stated in the zoning ordinance. That's not a variance. That's a general requirement in the zoning ordinance. Uh, and 20% uh, of the lot size would be a building footprint of 4,878 feet. What number say again? 4,878 square feet would be the allowable building footprint. And uh, I, I think the, build, the building footprint proposed is significantly smaller than that, but it's good to dot that I regardless yep. in the approval. Yep. And the building footprint includes decks, right? Yes. You said you had some information on floor area. Was, was that what was discussed previously? I heard the number 4,500 The total floor area is about 4,500. Okay. So the, the footprint's going to be less than 4,800. Is there any, um, are you doing anything to the grade of, of the, the lot itself? Uh, I, I can't speak to that. Um, we are not proposing any great change on the abutting property on this side. We are not changing any grade okay. here. Um, we may have to change the grade on this on this lighthouse point road side to to adjust the grade to bring up um, driveway. So the driveway is moving? The driveway is moving from Beacon Lane to Lighthouse Point Road, is, is that? It's a consideration, yeah. Yes. Um, but it's not, that decision hasn't been made yet? Is that? No. I guess it'd be kind of nice to know where the driveway is going. I mean, you're good. <clears throat> If it's if it's on, I think in the application, I, I got the sense that it, that it was that the egress was coming was going to change over from Lighthouse Point Road from Beacon. That is in was um, our desire, but you know, in an effort to make everything, you know, any more easier, smooth. I wasn't quite sure what was involved with changing the driveway over, um, or if it was possible. So. I thought it best to include it because we were talking about it and considering it, but it's not, you know, set in stone. I'm perfectly willing to leave the driveway where it is, but I would like to have the option. Maybe our driveway is not very, sh it's very short. <laughs> so, uh, if it, if you continue to have your access off Beacon, then I, I guess I'm a, I'm. I, I guess I'm, I'm assuming the light blue is the garage. Yes. And I guess I'm also assuming that, um, I'm, not sure how to, I'm assuming that the garage doors are there. Yes, that's, okay. that's the plan. Yeah, all right. They are so, meaning facing out onto Lighthouse. Yeah, I, right. I should give you a direction, but I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I, it's there. not on yet. Um, so if, it's, if you're coming off Beacon, you're going to have to effectively, you know, loop the the driveway around to get to the Right, I mean, or, or we just change the interior around a little bit to accommodate the car base on the Beacon Lane side oh, I see. as opposed to the, the other side. Of the garage. Well, of so that in that case, the driveway would slide down closer to the intersection? Um, I think that the driveway would be off of Lighthouse Point Road if we, if we were able or if we did go that route. The driveway would be off of Lighthouse Point. 
coming directly into the proposed garage. So right. pretty much a straight shot. Yeah. Um, out from the garage to Lighthouse Park. Yes. Do you know how far that would be from that corner? From the corner? I don't know. I think from the corner of uh, Beacon and Lighthouse Point. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Looks like about. Yeah, it depends on where the doors are. Yeah. Is that more than 40 feet? I think more, more than 40 feet. Yeah. Looks like 16 to 20. I mean, it looks like maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half. From, from I don't think, that, maybe we're not look, thinking of the same. If I'm looking at this plan right here, and I'm assuming that this is where the garage bays are, and then I draw a straight line here coming off that, and this pin is the corner of your lot, right? And then I'm just using my fingers, but I think that's roughly an inch, certainly not two inches, and then it says it's 1 16th equals one foot. So that would be roughly 16 to 20 feet, right? Uh, yeah. Does anybody have a ruler? I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's to the pin. Yeah, it is. <laughs> there is that. There's that 30 foot dimension for the setback joint to give you a little sense of of the scale of this so, thing. But, so it might be a little more than. I was looking to the pin you. on their lot. Mm -hmm. Which is an Which, where, will, where will the garage doors be uh, if, you're looking at, if you're looking at the garage structure from Lighthouse Point Lane? Will, will they be on the right, in the middle, on the left? Is it would be in the middle, where it says line of setback. Yep. Okay, then if you just go to the building from where that arrow ends, that would be about where the mm -hmm. garage bays would be. And of course, the other option is to just leave the garage base where they are now. So that would. So on that, I mean, if if they were to stay where they are now, is 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 the is the grade going to change that much? Um, less change in where they are right now. If you keep the driveway on a beacon lane it's less change. However, if you decide to put on a lighthouse point load, that will require a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. it, it's drop towers north side, so. If you leave it where it is now, does that mean that that gray sh shaded area that's within the setback that I'm assuming is the existing garage right here would then stay there? It would not be deleted, this part right here? No, I think we can keep this light blue. And just the put the bays is, yes. here exactly. instead of here. Right. right. So we're still reducing mm -hmm. the and non conformity. And that's effectively where they are now? Yes. yes. Yeah. If, if the driveway was going to be moved to Lighthouse Point Road, that would have to be approved by the Director of Public Works. He would analyze it for traffic safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, you know, that would not be part of this approval. It would be a separate permit to move the driveway. I guess my concern there is impacts to views if they've got to change the grade and everything. Right over there on that road. That's why I was concerned about it. That's why I asked initially. You mentioned that the square footage of the the new proposed structure will be about the same as the 4,500 square feet that's currently existing. Can you offer a little bit more definition on, on that? Is it going to be more? Is it going to be less? It, it's going to be about the same only because if you look at it, we're reducing, um, like for example, the garage. It's getting pushed back right now. It's 
overlapping. And it's, it's the same as just getting moved back a little bit, you know? We're not so much increasing the size with the exception to this light blue area, you know, on the, um, the right-hand side of the second page. That is the only additional um, space that we're adding to the structure. So that, that does look like an addition to the existing floor area. Yeah. That is additional. Well, that is additional, yes. Okay. Yeah. So potentially over and above the 4,500 square feet that's existing. I don't think it's above um, that to you. It's, it's, it should be within the required uh, the coverage, but um, we are in, in expanding the area. Um, however, we, we like to say we are not expanding the non-conforming area. It, it should be um, less in a, in a floor area that is. And we are expanding to towards the back side of the house, which is um, allowed expansion. For perspective on the application, the, the the section of this that triggers zoning board approval is the infill of the upper deck. If you look at the first page of the drawing, it's roughly uh, tw maybe 12 by 8 or 12 by 9 squaring off of that side of the house. Uh, the, the rest of the proposal com complies with the zoning ordinance for for a building permit. It's that, that one section of squaring off that side of the house is, is what triggers uh, the zoning board review. How, you know, how that affects your review is up to you. And then I'd like to mention in a definition in the ordinance, uh, section 19, 1-3, um, in filling the structure is um, considered not, not expanding nonconformity in this definition. So if you, um, if you go section 19-1-3 on the bottom line, um, include, included in this allowance are expansion which infill irregularity shaped stru structures um, that um, tells me that can be in built. Um, that, that's under the definition for yes. what? What? For increasing nonconformity of non the structure. And I don't think you're increasing the non-conformity non of the structure. If, if you were, then this would be a variance proceeding. But I, I would agree that you're not increasing non-conformity. Right. right. Um, because we're staying within 20% of the floor area? 20% uh, of, the, of, of, of the total area? No, be, because they're, they're not getting closer to the property line than they already are. Mm -hmm. And, and, and based, based on the definition that she just cited, the, 
it would it would not be an increase in nonconformity. Although the if you look at the third page, SK three, the line is going up to the tops of the chimney, not just to the existing roof line. I mean I mean So it, it's not just squaring off a structure, it's taking it up a little bit further yeah, too. I, I mean to be honest with you, the thing that I'm wrestling with is I keep I'm not even flipping there. I'm look I'm looking at these second and third pages of these roof lines. And I mean I don't I don't have my ruler with me, but it just seems that the overall area, area volume of this house is is increasing and schematically, look at it's increasing dramatically. Maybe maybe I'm overreading it, but that's that, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm struggling with. I mean I'm looking at this east elevation profile. <laughs> like, well cur currently it's it's a traditional cape with and I've, I've never been upstairs in the structure. I did a brief walk through downstairs. I was probably there for a total of five minutes, but just based on the pictures we're looking at, it's, you know, a traditional cape, and they want to get, you know, a full second story versus a traditional small Cape Cod second story. But I, but I think that's why I'm wrestling with what the, what the total square footage, square footage of, the, of this thing is. I mean, I just, I, okay, it's 4,500 now, I suppose, okay, we're maxed out at 48, 78, you know, can't be greater than a 20, you know, 20 percent. Well, well those are two different things, though, because the floor area that's permissible is just the footprint area, so just the space for the first floor. When we're talking about the overall floor area of the whole structure, I'm sure they've got a second floor, which sure. is what takes them up to that number. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that their footprint area is something around 2,500, maybe not even that. If I could address the, your concern about the, the fact that if we're making it all one level. Right now, um, the ceilings are very, very low. Um, like, in one room, they're really, really low. And then on the second floor, um, we are, we're just going to raise the, going to raise the ceiling on the first floor up, which makes the floor on the second floor go up. Sure. So it's not we're going to be adding, we're not going to be adding this way, we're just going to be making the ceiling taller. Sure. But not much taller than it is already. You know, the tallest part of the roof is there, so we're just making it all that same. I could get, uh, I could run upstairs and get the assessment card if the board would like some current floor area numbers. Uh, well, that may, may not, may or may not be necessary, but if I, if I look at the, um, so I'm looking at your south elevation, um, and we've got the existing ridge, which is 80 feet, six inches. And if I look at your scale, it looks like that that would go up approximately uh, what? four, five, mm -hmm. oh, five He's feet. Oh, here. Here. So I'm looking at your existing ridge. It looks like it's over by the garage. Right. Five feet, three inches. Of five the feet, three inches. Okay. Is that going to be living area over the garage, or is that just yes. for aesthetics? Yes, we're just taking the master bedroom that used to be on one end, and we're moving it over the garage.
correct me if I'm wrong, but if we're looking at map SK2, which is the second map shaded in blue, if we look at the, the east southeasterly corner of that, is that the area of that deck that's going to be rebuilt and changed, the area that's hanging into the into the setback, it sounds as though that is going to that's going to go up a few feet. I'm sorry, one more time. I'm, I'm exactly where I'm. We're looking at SK2, the easterly corner of the structure of the home. Yeah. Okay. That's hanging into the 25 foot setback. That already is admittedly hanging into the 25 foot setback to a certain extent. Um, the, this one, right? You're talking about right here, right? We're looking at the opposite end from the garage. The one that is not gridded, right? The one that's just blue? It is a uh, bright light blue. That would be a new altogether. That would be a new stru structure. That would be the new garage. Right, and that's that's going up beyond yes. what the existing. It's going up uh, five. What did you say? Five inches? Okay. No, five that's five. going up more like it looks like more like ten feet. Ten feet. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, no. Well, this is if it's over here, right? We're over here. Right. So this. So it's going from eighty. Eighty and a half to this, right? But it looks right. lower than the eighty. Which elevation, eight, Mike? Which elevation? Uh, you know, I wasn't I looking. Like, yeah, you're probably right. Yes, I, I, I guess it. you can tell us which elevation. I was <laughs> yes, to too bad. that's oh, the garage no. with the bedroom above, and that roof line will be raised. As this is the current. Galage, which has no second floor. It's just single. Um, I'm not talking about this. I, I'm looking at the other end of the map, which I believe is the easterly end of the map, although the direction isn't shown. And looking mm -hmm. at SK2. Yep. The, the far left. So the far left. So there we go. West. Far left. Be the, the west. Far oh, left. Far left. Far west. Okay, I'm sorry. So you're, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm giving you the wrong direction. My apologies. Okay, so. The far left. The far left. Far left. Far and left is about a foot taller, a foot on the how, left. How many additional feet? Up one. Up. One feet. One foot. Yes. Let me ask it. Well, let, me, let me ask it a different way. Sure. Of your of your of your various elevation profiles. Yes. Which elevation profile uh, it, uh, reflects SK2 on the left side? SK2 on the left SK4. side, which okay. is the west. West elevation, okay, west, SK4. Yes. Okay. And that, that's the side on which you have an abutment. Right. <coughs> and then also the chimney location is not um, oh, what, yes, we will keep the same chimney. Uh, so the height of the chimney will be not as tall as it's shown. It was um, originally we were going to move the chimney a in. chimney. So you're keeping the existing chimney? Yes. yes. If I'm looking at this south elevation profile, yes, and I'm looking at this box right here, is that the non-conforming area that's getting enlarged? Nope. No? That's the uh, new proposed garage with master bedroom, which is within the setback of the site setback. That on, that's shown here on the opposite end from the existing garage. So are you telling me that the new garage is going on the opposite end of the house? No, no. it's the same side. Okay, so um, this side here, are you... Are you I'm talking about right here on the south elevation, mm -hmm. the opposite yeah. end of mm -hmm. the home from the garage. Is that the non-conforming piece that's getting filled in more? Uh, it's really thick. It's right here. So the partially it is on the back side of the, so the north Just side. Just on the back side? On the north side. That's where there presently is deck and we're pulling it back. I guess what I'm struggling with is not knowing the square area of nonconformity that's being increased. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. It's just that one side. The nonconforming isn't being increased. It's well, it is in that one area. 
Mm -hmm. um, no, no, well, I, it's being reduced in that one um, area, right? Seems um, because of the <laughs> because of the definition that we led that the anything we consider increase of nonconformity only for uh, for the lateral expansion, right? Meaning the the infill or the volume or the high increase is not considered. So the so the height here is being infilled is not by definition not con not considered as an increase of nonconformity. But one of the things that we need to in, in consider as part of our deliberations yes. are the visual impacts mm -hmm. from this approval, okay. from the changes, which to my mind does include changes to the volume of the nonconformity, and that's why I'm trying to figure out how much that changes. Okay. It would bring the roof, bring the roof up to even, so if you look at it and you see where the roof goes now, and then where it goes down, so it would be in bringing that that one side where the deck now is, bringing it up to meet the roof line that exists now. And it is this corner right here. Yes. Okay. Right there, right now, is a deck and an eave. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Oh yeah, there's a photo of it to give you a better idea. Um, it might help a little bit. Yeah, the, the second page of the photos, the top photo. I have this picture. Shows that area. Yeah. So essentially, the one here. Gotcha. Right. And if you see, there's a um, where that eave is behind the banister. I mean the the deck. We're essentially bringing the deck back from the side to where that first post is. So on the first picture, mm -hmm. if I were to draw a line basically right here, yep. that's what you're infilling, right? Can I come over and just take a look a little closer? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just kind of roughly drawing it. But basically, this is what you're infilling. Yes. See where this post is right here? Yep. Okay, so this oh, right part here. of the deck right from here to here. here. Let's go. Okay. And so you can't see it very well. Here's the next picture, Joe. I have a better picture. Okay. Is it this one? I think so. Is that what we're looking at? Yes. Right here. Okay, so see where this is right here? Mm hmm So we're essentially just bringing this like this okay. and like that. Okay. So when so you, you see that. it, that's what that, that is. The, the dip right here. This right here is that. Okay. But this is actually coming more like up here, right? This. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Can you, since we're doing a little bit of show and tell here, on the, the east elevation, uh, uh, I'm just looking at where the garage is currently, and then we've got the proposed profile. Where, where approximately is that on the, on the pictures? Again, can I come and show you? Sure. So it's kind of this area here that I'm. Yeah. So this is this here is the garage now. Yeah. And this is the profile of the existing. So we're going to come up to where this right here is going to meet the roof line. We have a bit here. Let's go, right? That's so this is just going to be so it's all at the same time. Okay. So that so this depiction though is looking. At that from, from the other over side, here. From this side. Yeah. From this side.
Are there any more questions for Ms. McNulty? And any, any final comments at this time? I don't think so. I mean, I just really would like to get the house built. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to uh, open the meeting up for um, public comment. If anybody uh, has any uh, comment, I'd just like ask that you uh, identify yourself and then please come to the podium to comment. Yes, sir. Where do I go? Over here? Yes, please. Uh, my name is Jim Johnston. I'm here with my wife. We live across the street. We're at Two Lighthouse Point Road. So I have a, their house in my view, looking out the, uh, on my office window. So I see a lot of it. Uh, and uh, my background, I was t about 25 years, a distributor for Lindall Cedar Homes, and designed and sold about 250 houses over those years, all good houses. So I have a couple of questions. One is I don't understand why there isn't an exact count of the square footage of living space. You know, taking into a, if that's a factor in zoning here, and if, if that's a consideration, if that would require variance, if you were increasing the square footage of living space, I suspect it, and I'm, I'm disturbed that there is no exact answer, and it hasn't been checked. That's one concern. The other concern is, uh, it seems, from where I'm sitting back here, as if there's a, at least a possibility of the driveway entering from Two Lights Road. And uh, if you're looking at that on a two-dimensional drawing, that might work, but there's quite a drop in grade from the floor of the present garage to Two Lights Road. It's dropping uh, rapidly at that point from uh, Beacon Street down along that side of the house. So I would, my guesstimate would be you'd have a rise of maybe 15 feet from the curb to the garage, and I don't know that that's feasible in the distance that's allowed there. So I know you mentioned that the, that has to be approved by the somebody, that's somebody's jurisdiction, if that would be, I think that ought to be uh, approved before you grant a permit. Those are my only two concerns, and my instinct looking at the pictures of the house uh, as drawn quickly is that it's much bigger, and I don't know if that's an issue at hand, but I think that's the way it is. So those, those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, I'm Jackie Allen. I'm McNulty's neighbor. I, and I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I did want to ask a question. Um, where you were saying um, you would have to raise the elevation where you're adding on that new addition, but yet you've got all the roof line. Does that mean that the roof line is going to stay the same as the house, so it's all one level, or is that elevation going to increase the height of that? that new addition that's going on. Do, uh, can we tell we'll, from that? We'll bring Ms. McNulty back up. Oh, okay. <laughs> have an opportunity. I, I didn't know. And then the, just the other question was, it, you know, the way the drawing is right now, if you change, and where the, you know, the garage and the driveway is on Beacon, and you're right, it is a considerable drop down. And if you were to not move the driveway over there, does that mean you have to redesign the house because the garage doesn't look like it's there in your current drawing. Does that mean it would have to uh, be? What? And I didn't know if that was then subject to another review. So I just say I, I wasn't clear on those two points. So I was trying to be more informed so I could understand. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ken Lane. I live at 5 Beacon Lane. Thank you all for your deliberations and service to the community. 
you uh, must need the wisdom of Solomon to do your job because you wrestle with one of the age-old questions, the rights of the individual versus the rights of the community. Uh, I live at Five Beacon Lane across the street from the house, and I would just like to say I think it's unfortunate that the roof line is being raised and extended blocking the views of three families in perpetuity who live here year-round for a four to five week summer residence from a New York family. At least that's what we were told. So uh, I don't know what the answer is to the dilemma, but thank you for your efforts. Any other comments? Yes, sir. <coughs> My name is Dave Allen. I'm the uh, other half of Jackie. Um, we live at Fort Beacon Lane. Have, we built a house 30 years ago and have lived there since then and raised our family and feel blessed to be able to have a house like we have and a place like we have. Thank you also for the proactiveness shown by the town in letting us know that this was happening. We obviously have a vested interest. We live right next door and for a long period of time, as Paul had pointed out, the house has been unlivable and dilapidated, and it's become really an eyesore for the neighborhood. So I appreciate the fact that uh, the McNulty's are doing something about it. We're supportive of that situation being taken care of. Um, on the positive side of the equation, a couple of things. One, um, I also appreciate the fact that they're trying to stick to the same footprint. We had grave concerns that something dramatic was going to happen. And although I truly believe that the house is going to increase fairly significantly in size due to the addition of the garage and the addition of the non-conforming space, um, it is still pretty much on the same footprint. So we definitely appreciate that. And the fact that the roof line, according to the plan that I've seen, is only supposed to go up one foot from where the existing roof line is. So those are all positives from my standpoint. The only negative, obviously, is something that Ken has alluded to, and that with the expansion of the space, the addition of the garage, and the single roof line, um, that does have an impact um, on our view of the lighthouse and the lightkeeper's house. I don't know that there's anything that can be done about that, but I just wanted to let you know that, you know, we've lived there for 30 years. We've enjoyed that, um, and I don't know if anything can be done to change the impact that could result from that new addition and the higher roof line. Um, but if there is, we'd certainly uh, be supportive of that. So bottom line, um, thank you for the ability or the opportunity to, uh, to give input. We are supportive of the project and getting it a better looking place. Um, but we still have concerns about the impact on our views and the size of the building. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Any, any other comments from the public? All right, uh, Ms. McNulty, you may come back up. Okay. So I'll see if I can remember everything. Um, in regard to the driveway, uh, we've already discussed, I think that we were toying with the idea of the two lights. It's more likely than not we're going to keep it where it is on Beacon. Um, that was just in the original phases. We were thinking of what we could do, best usage of the property. Um, Ken, I'm not a New Yorker, first of all. <laughs> um, I'm raised in Boston. We moved into this house in Cape in 1998. Two of my sons, three of my sons went through Cape schools. Um, my middle son graduated from Chevres. My two older from Cape High. My daughter went to Legendary Preschool. I'm very much here. This isn't a temporary residence. Um, you know, I plan on using this house full time once my kids finish school. And I have a daughter who's a junior in high school and a son who's in the seventh grade. So, you know, you never know. I might end up sending him to Chevers too. So it's not a summer residence, it's not a temporary residence, and I'm not from New York. <laughs> so, um, Jackie and Dave, I want you to know that it was with great consideration to your side of the property that we did all these, and we've been doing them for about five months, because I don't want to get any closer to you. I never wanted to obstruct your views. In fact, when we decided to take down the trees in the back, I thought, 
great, Jackie and Dave will be happy because they'll have a better view. By bringing the roof to one height, the garage as it is now in that end of the property is lower than, than anything right now. So we aren't going to be obstructing your view any more than it is now in my mind's eye because it's, the roof is where it is and so it's just going to be that way further out. And it's going to be the same height. It's just going to go for the whole house. The garage is now just the one-story garage, so it will come up. That roof will come up. So, but in in so far as the square footage, I mean, in all honesty, initially we've always had three bedrooms in the basement, three bedrooms, one bathroom, and um, a gym. No, no, that the, that's the bedroom. Three bedrooms and a bathroom. Then, for all intent and purposes, that house has only had two bedrooms. There's one bedroom on the main floor, and then there's a bedroom on the second floor. So that's one, two, and then three, four, five. So what we're doing is we're taking the bedrooms out of the basement. We're dividing the second floor. Heretofore, only had one bedroom and one bathroom. And we're making that space into three bedrooms and one bathroom. We're moving the master bedroom from the side that's closest to the Allens to the opposite side because we, we have more room there. And, you know, we wanted to have a master um, suite, bedroom suite, over the garage for quite some time. And it's just, you know, since we turned down the garage, it seemed like, you know, a natural thing to do. The, the amount of times the house has been built onto, these people can probably speak to that much better than me. Uh, judging by what it looks like inside, there have been three additions. I don't know. I mean, we... We actually have a roof inside the ceiling. Um, <laughs> so, and every time somebody built onto the house or remodeled the house, they did something big, you know, like they wired the house or they plumbed the house. So this is just a great opportunity for us to make the entire house much more user-friendly. It's it, the way it is now. It's just all chopped up into little bits. And we never knew what was behind the walls um, until recently. So, I mean, it's not our objective to obstruct anyone's views. It's just our objective to make our house so that it's a home for us. You know, and keeping in mind, I, I mean, we're pulling back on the Allen side. We're actually pulling back, you know, some. And we're raising the roof because right now it's, it's like, little teeny person space there. It's like four foot tall, you know, so. I mean, I hope that addressed the questions. I don't know if any of you have any additional. Thank you, Ms. McNulty. Does, does uh, any other questions from the board? Can I ask one more? Sorry. Yeah, of course. Um, if I'm looking at this first map, okay. the existing house, can you tell me roughly where people live? The people here? Yeah, sure. If you don't yeah. mind. No. <laughs> so two here, yep. and then one here. Can, can we, we turn? These, yeah, can we see these folks right here? They Joanna, you have to share. I will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why don't you hold <laughs> it? Up? Okay, this oh, is I like it. Two lights, terrace, and the land. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the couple behind me, they live in the across the corner from the corner, so their house is over here. Mm -hmm. The Allens, they live right next door. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lane lives over here. He lives across the street and then right here. Okay. Thank you. If you haven't noticed that, it's not for us all. There's a little bit of a spot now. Yep. Well, can, can you come to the, I, you, just when you're not at a microphone, it's not, it's not picked up for the, and the whole town can't hear you. No, it was just for clarification was all just, you had mentioned the elevation for where you were looking to put the garage on Two Lights Road. 
and that the elevation would have to go up, and I think it would have to go up considerably because of the drop-off. I just didn't know with that new addition if it would have the same roof, roof height as what you're considering raising one foot for the whole house. So, or is that with the elevation, could that roof line actually be higher than what it is, what you're planning on for the house? You can't answer, but you do need to come up to the podium. Thank you. Do I have to leave, or can I stay with Paul? <laughs> so I was, you know, just trying so to understand that. It's all going to be even. So this is where this is this is the deck. Okay, the deck is getting removed halfway. This is the garage. The garage right now is at this, and it's going to be even with the, the roof line of the highest point of the house right now. Right, so the whole, the highest point of the house will be the whole house. Will be the whole house, and then as well as the whole addition. Right, right but it's linear more than it is. It's a little bit back. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right, but it's all the same. So looking out, looking out, you would end up seeing the, the highest, McDonald's house. This is going to be like in front of, like the trees that are in front of the McDonald's. House. Like, I have three giant pines that block the, Mc, you know, they're in between my house and the McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. So this would be. Looking, in, they would go back to where those pines are. Right. So you know how the house right now. You've got the house. We've got mm -hmm. the little bit of the deck area that right. the stairs are taken off, and you're looking to build that out for the whole house. And then the roof line, that part of it, then it drops down, and then the garage is a little bit lower too. But now all that's going to be all, just all even. that all high, and that's what we were referring to. Just right. you know that that roof line is going up quite a bit from where it is today, just to have the whole... To have it even with where even it is. Even with the whole... Yeah. Yep. Right now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Just for clarity. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Unless there's any other comments from the public, uh, we'll close the, uh, the public portion of uh, the, the meeting on, on this issue, and um, we can open it up to uh, board discussion. And I'd like to... Start. Anybody have any comments? Well, I guess I, you know I am mindful of uh, the fact that that the that the uh, the the reason this is before us is um, be because of the the, the, the existing nonconformity and the and uh, the enclosure of that upper deck I guess is really what raises it and that at the end of the day the setback although it's misstated in the application um, is going from I guess six feet Ben from, from your measurements to, to to nine feet from that from that property line so um, you know from 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 that perspective um, you know, it, it, you know, I, I, I guess I understand that, you know, it's, it's not increasing the, the, the nonconformity, which is, you know, one of the tests here. I, I think that, um, I, I guess I'm still a, a little bit unclear on what the total gross square footage is, um, for, um, for this replacement, and I, I mean, I think a lot of the questions tonight have been all dancing all around that, and and I think at the end of the day, what we're really left with is um, the the level of, of increase that that's allowed under the ordinance, and you know, doing some um, for calculations on their on their schematic drawings on exactly how high the you know I think I think. For, mo for many of us, it's it's how high the ridge line is is going to be. Not so much at its highest point, but from its lowest point. And I think it's that issue that um, I'm hearing um, is is a bit of a sensitivity with some of the neighbors. Um, and I can I can understand that. Um, but I, but I think from a uh, I, I, what I'm wrestling with is, is from an, an ordinance perspective is, uh, you know, Section 3, Reconstruction or Replacement, talks about the nonconforming structure may limit, uh, 
reconstruction of a non-conforming structure not in compliance with the above limitations, um, and that's if it is going to increase the square feet or floor area, which we understand it will, um, may be permitted provided that such reconstruction reconstruction is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent as determined by the zoning board in accordance with the purpose of this ordinance and no case shall a structure be reconstructed or replaced so as to increase its nonconformity. Um, it goes on in determining whether the building reconstruction replacement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent the zoning board of appeals shall consider the physical condition and type of foundation present. It, the, the section of the ordinance seems to only speak to the setback, and they're actually decreasing the setback. Now, there's a, a the volume, the volume that encroaches on the setback may be increasing because they're filling it in. Right now, it's it's mostly a deck. Well, it's it's a deck and some of the house, and now they're bringing it back but filling it in. But it's anecdotal. You know, that's true. <laughs> right. It looks like it, the volume's increased, but we don't know if we that's for a fact. That's true. Um, but. The last paragraph of section three points us to section, the criteria in section two, which does include impacts on views. Right, that's, it, that should say B2. And right. my, my version, it refers back to the same. Oh, sure. that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. But no, and that, and that adds the, the in determining whether the building relocation meets the setback, the greatest practical extent, size of the lot, slope of the land. I don't think there's any question but that the volume of the structure over in that non-conforming area is increasing on that, as shown on that south elevation on SK3, like this little area. I don't know how much it's increasing right. by, but it certainly appears that that's increasing. Um, I know certainly the volume over the, and around the garage is increasing as well, but my understanding is that we can't really look at that because it's not in the nonconforming area. Um, and I also, from the map, it appears that that little area that is nonconforming, increasing volume, is right in the Lane and Allen kind of sight lines. I'm not sure whether it's in your sight line or not. I can't, it doesn't look like it, but I don't, I don't think you'll be able to see it over the garage. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just struggling with how, how much and whether we can consider that because we haven't done that before. I mean, it, it seems to me that the, the only part we can really be focused on is the part where it encroaches on the setback. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the part on the, uh, the other side by the garage, it, it is increasing, but I mean, the ordinance has height limitations and it's within those height limitations. I, I don't think that is really properly before the board. I don't agree with you. I agree with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll put my observation in. Again, I, I agree with you, Joanna, that that the uh, the criteria in, in Section 2 there does uh, bring views into the equation. But, and I, I understand that sort of enclosing that deck area could have an impact on views. But when I look at that west elevation, it doesn't appear to me that the area that we're talking about, that, that deck area that's being enclosed that is within the setback is going to be what's limiting views. I think it's, it's the, the increase in height of, of the garage, like you said. So whether or not that, is, that, that area is actually enclosed or not, I, I don't think it's going to, it doesn't appear to me like it's going to have a big impact on 
either saving or eliminating someone's view. Well, except for maybe the Allens if they're right here. I don't know where, I can't tell where their yeah, house it's hard is. To, that's, it, yeah, it is hard to, to see what their, which direction the views are. Well, I think they're, I think they're, I think they're there and there, aren't they? And there's the west, there's the west elevation, there's the, so it's there and it's there. There, I mean. Yeah, this be blocked by this roof. Because I think. And this is the last one. And it's this, it's, it's, it's that. It's that, yeah. For, for the lanes. <laughs> Down here. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's for the Allens or not. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that, mm. that's more the Allens, it's more. Mm. Okay, they're sideways. I mean, they're. Yeah, right. Okay. And I right. mean, the view could be impacted by this, but that's not the structure that's encroaching. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the structure that's encroaching. Mm -hmm. I've got the same concerns. I mean, it, it does appear to me to be, first off, an expansion um, of the non-conforming area of the home. And then you get into the view analysis and limited information we have, I think, tends to show that there's going to be some encroachment on view. And I guess the question is then, what do we do about it? I mean, I think we've talked extensively about how we, uh, we lack a little bit of information that would be helpful. Um, more square footage or volume calculation would be helpful. Uh, more information on actually site and view, I think, would be helpful. So, uh, I, and again, being brand new to the board, I don't know whether uh, the board has at times given applicants an additional opportunity to bring more information uh, at the subsequent meeting or whether we just act tonight and, and uh, let the chips fall where they may. But I want to throw that out there as a possibility as well. I mean, from from the perspective of obstruction of views from the existing nonconformity and the expansion, at least of the roof line of the existing nonconformity, I, I don't necessarily think it's the applicant's obligation to come forward with how much view that's going to be obstructing. We've heard some comments from abutters that they're concerned about it, but. I, uh, you know, uh, nobody's come forward with specific, ev you know, evidence or anything before the board that shows right now we can see this. If we, if the roof line is changed, we're not going to be able to see that. Um, and I think in the past we, uh, we have heard some specific, uh, you know, testimony before the board discussing we are no longer going to be able to see Casco Bay. Well, I certainly heard Mr. Allen say that he wouldn't be able to see the lighthouse. Light, lighthouse, that's true. It's 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 uh, the board's discussion. Well, I guess I guess a couple. One of the things I did hear is is that I think the chimney elevation was going to remain unchanged. How that factors into whatever our decision is, I just want to note that, and then. I, I, I'm not, and I'm not sure it's it's a it's even well it's not before us, but I think there's still some questions as to where the driveway is going, and I think I'm hearing the applicant saying that it's going to remain on Beacon Lane, but um, I think in the in the plan, or at least the way it's the, the plan is configured, it's the, the garage doors are going to be mm -hmm. facing. Um, uh, Lighthouse, uh, Lighthouse Point Road. Point Road. So, um, you know, it'd be nice to, I guess, get that pinned down because I think, as it relates to, you know, the, you know, one of the criteria of slope of the land or even, you know, the potential for soil erosion. I, I think where, where they're going to lay the, you know, where the driveway is going, you know, may may have some some impact. Certainly on the slope of the land because I, I think I heard 
in public comment that that the, the grade is but but again is that that's the other side of the house other side of the nonconforming. yeah yeah it's I mean what's what's before us is I mean as as Ben mentioned we're here because of the the change in the the nonconformity um, so it I, I don't think, again, I don't, I don't think it's really before the board where the driveway is or how the driveway, I mean, either the driveway can go there or it can't go there. It's not a variant. I mean, we're not, there's not a variance. It's not a variance, yeah. It's not a nonconformity that we're, we're being asked to approve. Um, it just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, from my perspective, we are being asked to look at a set of criteria that are in here in section 19-4-4 capital B dot two. And those do specify that we look at the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, if any, and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. And the plans that we have before us give us sufficient information to address some of those criteria and not all of those criteria. And to my mind, that I'm, that's what I'm struggling with. Um, and certainly we can't, but that, look, we're not the planning board. We don't look at all of the things that the planning board looks at. That's not our jurisdiction. We can't say, yes, you can put your driveway here or no, you can't. But we also do need to look at what our criteria are as they apply to this overall impacts to the non-conforming area such that that's being complied with to the greatest extent practicable. And I do think that relocating the driveway will then be going into additional area of the property so it does have some bearing on what we're doing as do kind of all of these other things that we're talking about. But I, I mean, the, the beginning of that paragraph is in determining whether the building relocation in this, in this instance reconstruction um, meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. I mean, that's, I, I'm, I'm still struggling with how that, how where the driveway is, that's just something else that um, the homeowner is considering doing as part of an overall project. Which we're reviewing because well, there are non-conforming setbacks. So then if we say, we're just looking very narrowly at this one area where you're out of compliance with the setback. We're not going to look at the driveway, which is going into setbacks over here, despite the fact that the existing garage, as shown, and is within the setbacks on the front, and that's shown as part of the area that's going to be deleted. It just becomes a little, without knowing this is exactly where this is going to go, it becomes a little bit difficult to say, here are the impacts on the non-conforming area, on the, on the non-conformity with regard to the setbacks, when the driveway might be here or it might be over here, we're not really sure. Like if you look at that SK1, which is the existing structure, it looks to me like the front of the garage, the existing garage, is being taken off and that's being counted as part of the, what is now non-conforming that's coming out. Right, the black they're, de shaded they're area. decreasing the non-conformity by the garage. Right. right. And so we're assuming, but then part of it is staying for, I guess, a front entry, that part in blue that's also shaded. Correct. I mean, that's, that's how I read the plan. And so, but then if that existing driveway is staying there, I just think that to me, where the driveway is going is relevant to the analysis of the nonconformity, given that right now it's in a nonconforming area. And it's showing as coming off.
You're saying because the driveway is in a nonconforming? No, area? but the garage and the where the driveway garage. is now. Right. And the driveway is going to move. Presume. I mean, well, the garage maybe. is moving. Maybe. So the maybe but we don't know. <laughs> so we're counting, I guess we're counting in the ledger of deduction of non reduction of nonconformity part of this garage and the current location of the driveway. But we don't know over here where the driveway is going to go. So how can we count it kind of both ways and say, we're not going to look at the new driveway because that's in a conforming area, but we're going to count but the now you're, driveway. But now you're talking about out. the driveway, which is always... And the garage. Well, but they're separate. I mean, the garage is the garage, and that's a structure that is either conforming or non-conforming. The driveway is going to be outside of the area in which you can build on the property because it gets you from the house out to the street. Mm -hmm. So the new garage is all within, it, it's all conforming. It's all within the, the, the setback. So there's going to be a driveway to that garage. And where it goes, I, I don't, I don't we, we don't know where it goes. And I, I, that, that's obviously an, an issue, but is that an issue before us? Hey, Jude, is there a side from the applicant saying the driveway is going here? Is there, are there other pieces of information that you're specifically looking for that, that might perhaps help? Yes. Well, <laughs> well, I, I mean, can't that's where something, it is. I mean. The driveway can't stay where it is, right? I mean. Yes, it can. I mean, we could obviously put conditions on our, well, not, not obviously. We could consider putting conditions on um, our approval of the request. But I, I'm not sure that we have, I, I, I'm not sure that we have that. Um, power to do that under the ordinance and what's before us. I mean, it's a, it's a driveway. And there, we're, we're not being asked. It has nothing to do with the conformity or nonconformity of the structure on the property. Well, I just feel, now I feel like I'm, we're starting to chase, I'm, start, I'm starting to chase my tail. Because, uh, yes, it's, it's limited. We're being asked to look at, at the, um, at, at the the reason for you know we're, look, we're looking at the nonconformity, but in looking at the, the the definition of relocation, it's asking you. To, it, it is it is suggesting we have to take other things into consideration in looking at that nonconformity. And Joanne has gone through them four different times. But, you know, and and basically it's in the application. Plus, justify why the relocation, reconstruction, and/or replacement should be granted based on the size of the lot, the slope of the land, blah 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 blah. So either, either we're taking the criteria into account or we're ignoring it. And, and I don't think we're ignoring it. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, to, to, to me, you've got to take the, you know, you, you've got to take the entire application and, and, uh, and, and the plan into consideration, at least for purposes of evaluating the criteria. Absolutely. I understand what you're wrestling with. You know, on one hand, you're looking at the west side of the house, and on the other hand, you're looking at the complete application. And it, it, and it makes sense. Uh, on one hand, the applicants could have come in with an application to the zoning board saying, we want to rebuild the west side of our house. And they could have come here only presented the west side of their house in filling that one area, raising the roof peak of, of that one area. Uh, but they presented their whole plan. I, I don't think they were required to do that. They could have got a zoning board approval to rebuild that one section of their house. And then you know they could have executed the building permit for the other 80% of the house without zoning board review. But that's not how the application's presented. It's, it's presented as one project. So I, I think the zoning board needs to 
sort of decide are are we gonna are we gonna look at it as the whole property plan as presented or are we gonna limit it to the west side of the house? Oh I'll <laughs> I'll give you my opinion on that. I, I sort of agree with you, Ben. I I, I think in determining whether the building relocation meets the setback to the greatest extent practical, practicable, practical. Uh, you know, I think they've, I think they've actually improved the the condition by moving the the building farther away from the the property boundary, and uh, you know. I'd, I, I don't necessarily think the location of the driveway um, is is going to change the the nonconformity. So, in my mind, it's 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 more of an it's a narrower issue. Yeah, I mean that that's the way that I'm leaning. I, I'm looking at I, I think the language of the ordinance focuses on the setback mm -hmm. and what what setback they're encroaching on and. The only one that is 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 non-conforming. Well, the only one that will still be non. The only one that is, at least from what I believe we've heard, the only one that is potentially changing, and the change will, you know, potentially negatively impact a butters, um, is the one on the west side. It now, I mean, the, the other one is, is decreasing, the nonconformity. So uh, yeah, my view is we're, we're fo we should be focused on the west side. Um, and that's basically to the exclusion of the rest of what's going on in the project. I mean, point being, kind of to follow up on what Ben was saying, they could have come with, uh, you know, a two-phase project, and if the first phase of the project was 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 dealing with this, um, the the part, the nonconformity, we would have dealt with that, and then they could have just gone directly to Ben for a building permit on the remainder of the project, and as long as it met the, you know, the requirements for the issuance of a building permit, it would never be before us. It would, it, it would be out of our hands. And the fact that they're doing the entire house at the same time, to me, doesn't mean we're allowed to now basically consider the entire project. Because m m most of the project is not increasing any nonconformity. It's not even dealing with the nonconformity. I would agree with you if that was the application in front of us, but it's not. And so then if you look at the application that's in front of us and the standards, then how do you ignore <laughs> two thirds of the application? Because the language in the ordinance starts with indeterminate, well, the, the language in that in point two, the, the relocation, which we read into the reconstruction in determining whether the building Reconstruction meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. We're, we are here to consider the setback. So and if the, we look. The nonconformity of the setback, not the garage on the other side of the property which they happen to be building. So if we look at just that nonconforming piece on the west, west side, side, particularly on that. Northwest corner. Um, mm -hmm. Do we think that it's meeting the setback to the greatest practical extent? Historically, we have approved 
a similar kind of addition where there was only an increase in, to volume in nonconformity. But in those instances, we didn't have record complaints about impacts to the view shed. That's, that's true. I mean, the, to me, the, the, it boils down to the view and whether or not, I mean, it, it, they're increasing the height. Uh, I mean, they're filling it in. It's now a, a second level deck and it's being filled in and it's, it's going to be the height is increasing, I mean, without a doubt, at that point. We don't know exactly how much, but it looks like I mean, the garage is going up five feet three inches, and it looks like the garage is higher than the current. But, but now, from, from a pure west elevation, if you look at the west elevation profile, it almost, looking at it, you know, head on directly from the west. It's a wedge. It, it's almost irrelevant because they're going they're building up higher at the east end which would be obstructing the view anyway not the view to the lighthouse though where is the lighthouse well i mean let me look at the do you know where the lighthouse is do you remember hmm? where, where is it? well i don't know it should be to the i'm thinking it's to the right of the chimney Oh, that one. <laughs> it would be nice to know that, wouldn't it? <laughs> Google map it, Mike. Luck on that. I don't think we can pull that up. Here, guys. No, I, think I don't think right, we're yeah. supposed to do that. I don't think we probably aren't. Do what? I mean, we're not supposed to be looking for our own evidence about our students, are we? Ah. Sorry. Sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would like to know where the light is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Thanks already. Hey, if if it's coming down to the view and I would agree that that's 
probably the only point here that the board it, you know that that's the key point for the board here to consider and it's a point the board has to consider is the view uh, it, I mean it is possible to table this and uh, allow both the applicant and the neighbors to come back with any evidence that supports either either point uh, next month if you don't feel like you have enough evidence to make that decision uh, in, in my opinion, if, if, the, if, if the neighbors look at you know, the conforming portion of the structure, they can legally go up to 35 feet. I don't think the infilled portion, non -con the, in, the infill of the non-conforming portion is going to affect the view. It will certainly be a slight effect of the view of the overall project, but, but most of that is conforming. And, uh, and I'm not sure if the non-conforming portion will change the view. Um, my guess would be that it wouldn't. But I'm, you don't want to make a decision off of my guess. Well, at the same time, we can get some harder numbers on actual volume of what's going on here, whether it's the square footage or, or uh, the height differential between what's existing and what's proposed. Well, we've got, we've got the height numbers. I'm not. I'm not sure how the volume or area plays into the approval, but we've, we've, I mean, we've got the height, we've got the, we've, we, we know the vertical expansion of the structure and how it will. What we don't have on here actually is on these elevations, what the increase is for that corner. That's what I've been struggling with all along, is that the number, the existing ridge line for the garage is provided, the existing ridge line for the main highest portion of the house is provided, and the proposed ridge line is provided, but the existing baseline for that deck that's being infilled is not provided. So you, one might guess at the increase to the proposed ridge line at being roughly eight to ten feet, but it's not provided. Well, we have uh, the south elevation profile. Yes. That doesn't show what you're looking for? No, because I think it's this corner right here, right? Mm hmm Yep. So what is this number here? the height of this back piece, the existing deck mm -mm. level. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it, yes, one can guess. It's, it's a scale drawing, so we, we, we can say what that vertical increase is. Kind of. <laughs> why, why kind of? I mean, can't we just yeah. measure it? Yeah. It's a... Uh, just under three quarters of an inch. So uh, an eighth of an inch. That's one. Two, four. Yeah, six feet. Just just under, just under six feet on that section. Does that include the pan handle? Excuse me. Does that include the, the pan handle? I think there's a look. I think. That's not a huge difference, but I think it's... No. They're what measuring the height. That oh, it was just measuring the height. Okay. And then that's from the ridge line. That's on the south elevation from that lower ridge line the, up to the proposed ridge line. Not yeah. from the deck elevation. And Correct. the reason I said kind of is because that's not making a ton of sense to me, given that the existing ridge line shown for the garage is 80 feet 6 inches. The existing ridge line, sorry, the proposed ridge line is shown as 85 feet 9 inches, which is a difference of 5 feet and 3 inches. And if you look across, that deck elevation looks substantially lower than the existing ridge line of the garage, but what you're telling me is that it's only a matter of inches lower. Well, the, the deck, you want to know from the, from the floor of the deck to the to the proposed ridge right which you just oh, told okay. me was no no, 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 no he was doing it from the from the ridge 
he, he essentially gave you the dimension of that white box. Here? Yes. Isn't that what I wanted, the top? Well, the, the deck is actually lower than that. Oh, I was talking about here. Yeah, no, that's about, well. But that doesn't look right if you look over. Doesn't it look substantially lower than the existing ridge line of the garage? Looks, looks about the same to me. I mean, slightly lower, but it's, it's tough to tell. It's hard to say. Anyway. If you look at the pictures too, it looks. Looks like about 13 from the, from the floor of the deck. That's better. 13? Thir yeah, that thir makes more sense. 13 like feet. If you look at the picture, you can tell that the garage is a lot higher than that. Sure. Yeah, from the deck. Four. That's, yeah. and, and does the net matter to us? Eh? What we've heard is that the, the setback is actually going to increase by three feet, I think. So is that a consideration that, that we need to take into consideration is, is you know, what is actually the net effect going to be? We know that the property, the proposal is to go up, but what is the net impact of actually shrinking the uh, out the setback a little bit by a few feet? I don't know. Maybe that's something we want to talk about too. Um, another reason for more information. Can you say that again, Mike? can try. Do we, do we want to take into consideration what the net effect is here? We've got, I, I believe that the, the testimony that was established that we've got um, a current encroachment nine feet into the setback. Which is decreasing by three feet. Decreasing by three feet. So, you know, if, if we have somebody who does the actual calculation on what that decrease means to the overall uh, renovation, at least with respect to that portion that is in, in the non-conforming space, is that going to have an impact on the board? You know, I, try, I don't know, trying to take a big step back and think that the, the setback, the non-conformity is, is decreasing in terms of the encroachment on the setback. And the reason that uh, I mean, the nonconformity is decreasing unless we're talking about you know, volume of nonconformity. In uh, the view. And the view, but. In the view. In the view. Volume in the view. We're moving volume right. down low to volume in the view, yep. probably bigger volume. Looking at the south elevation, if you, I mean, I suck at math, I'll be the first to admit it. But this little piece looks, I'm guessing the volume is slightly smaller than this volume. Slightly. I mean, so are we, it, it sounds like what I'm hearing generally from the board is that the inclination is that more information may be needed? Or, or does somebody want to make a motion to approve or not approve the request. Personally, I I don't think I'll, uh, for me. I don't, I'm not sure there there could the applicant or the neighbors could provide anything that's going to give us that you know that's going to change our, my decision one way or another. But um, you know, I th I think by pulling it away from the property line. Um, this is McNulty as, as, as it's been mentioned, is sort of reducing the nonconformity. And, and that's, what, you know, that's what we're looking at here. Unless we're going to require some sort of view shed study or something like that. I mean, if someone were to give you a volume number, what, what would we do with that? I guess what I'm struggling with is overall not having an issue with the bulk of the project, um, but having concerns about shifting the impacts to, from the nonconformity to an area which is technically problematic from an ordinance perspective, but not problematic from a view perspective to 
a place that is problematic from a view perspective. So my, and I don't know that there's necessarily a ton more information that I could get from the neighbors that would be helpful there, although it would be nice to have clarity about what is being, whether this area is what's blocking the view of the lighthouse for the Allens or not. That, that to me is, is it. Um, and so that's, uh, let me, let me, it, it, it sounds, I'm, I'm hearing from the public <laughs> that, that this, this, they may be able to address this um, if, if there's a motion to reopen public comment. I'll I, I think. I'll make a motion to reopen public Second. comment. All in favor? All right, we are reopening public Thank comment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the really, my comments relative to the view are not on the westerly side of the house. Um, the view on the westerly side where the non-conforming area is, the roof line will go up, the house will fill out, and the view might be impacted a few months of the year when there's no leaves on the trees. But other than that, that non-conforming side on our boundary, if the house goes up, it really doesn't impact our views. That's not what my comment was relative to. It's the other end of the building. How about the other neighbors? I'm sorry? How about the other neighbors? Um, Ken would have to speak to that, or should speak to that. Thank you. The raising of the garage by however many feet it is, clips a portion of our view of the water. But given the uh, horrible condition of the house now, almost anything would be an improvement. And I would urge you to approve this plan. Thank you. It takes us a long time sometimes, but we really do appreciate your comments. We really do. Um, so that, that will close. We're done. That will close the... Uh, <laughs> That will close the um, re. Oh, sorry. Before we, yes. I'm Susan Johnston. I live at Two Lighthouse Point Road, which is to your question diagonally across. Um, so, my question is not so much about the view because we basically that won't impact a view of the lighthouse. The lighthouse is behind us, but I'm concerned more about the driveway situation. Um, so my question would be, if the driveway remains the same on Beacon, where it is now, it's a very short little driveway, and I haven't looked at all of your big elevations, but it would have to loop around the house, and I'm concerned about what would happen to the grade in the drop-off, and I couldn't, I didn't see, I don't know, and maybe uh, Paul could answer this question, there's three big evergreen trees on the road, big ones, that, and I didn't know if it was on, the driveway would come in on this side closer to Beacon or on the other side. And I think that that's an important consideration because I'm concerned about the, the grade. It's a big drop off there. So would there be, if the whole garage got lowered, you know, it did, if it came in from the other side, the garage maybe would be lowered. I don't know. But you'd wind up kind of with a wall of of soil possibly, you know, not very attractive. And I don't know that that's your venue or had anything to do with any of this. And I also, thanks for all your, your thoughtful work here. And I also want to commend McNulty's. I think it's great that they're redoing the house because it looks awful and, you know, and, and um, I think that that's a really, really good. And I'm sure that this is all going to get resolved so that everyone will be happy, right? I know you will. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. So that will close the reopening of the public comment. <laughs> and, and I think on the driveway front, what I heard from Ben basically is that that's a whole separate application process. Yes. And if there are issues with that application and involve setbacks and maybe it ends up back with us, probably that will be dealt with by public works, I think you said? Yes. Would anybody like to make a motion? Yes. I would like to move that we approve the application. A second. Um, is there any further discussion that we'd like to have on the? <laughs> no. I think we need okay. some more. Um, all in favor? All right. Um, so the application has been approved six to nothing. And let's find the effects. Go to the finding effects. I can find the finding effects. All right. <clears throat>
Uh, finding of fact. This is a request to remodel and expand a single family dwelling per section 19-4-3.b.3 of the zoning ordinance at map U15, lot 45, two Beacon Lane, applicant Paula McNulty. Number two, Paula McNulty is the owner of record of the property at map U15, lot 45, at two Beacon Lane. Um, additional findings of fact. The Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. The proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. The proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Are there any other proposed findings of fact? All right. I would, I would like to add one that the, the shortest distance from the structure to the property line will be increased from approximately nine, from approximately six feet to approximately nine feet. The shortest distance from the structure to the property line will be increased from approximately six feet to approximately nine feet. Okay, an additional finding is the shortest distance from the structure to the property line will be increased from approximately six feet to approximately nine feet. Any others? All right, should we vote on this? Yes. All in favor? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Are we done? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Anybody second? All in favor? We're done.